this conference will now be recorded. Interrupt. So we discussed uh, like what exactly is an interrupt first. So what are the different interrupt handlers we have got? And also along with that, we also saw uh, which is the interrupt handler available for our PIC 16 f 877A microcontroller. Then apart from that, we started configuring one of the source of the uh, interrupt. So our PIC 16 f 877A microcontroller has how many sources of interrupt? Yes, so it has 15 sources of interrupt out of which we discussed the first source, which was the external interrupt. So that external interrupt was raised whenever we press a switch, which is connected to the RB0 pin of the microcontroller. So whenever an interrupt occurs, control will go to the ISR, it executes the ISR and come back, comes back to execute the rest of the instructions in your program. So we saw how to overcome the drawbacks of polling with the help of interrupts. We saw how interrupts gives us a good response time. How interrupts will not make me lose any event or how interrupt is making me manage the power on an efficient manner. So we discussed all of this with uh, an example for each of them. Uh, we saw the examples uh, for the interrupts, uh, like how interrupts are beneficial in overcoming the drawbacks of polling. So we discussed these many things uh, with respect to the interrupts in the previous class. And today we are going to start with uh, the next uh, source of interrupt, which is nothing but the timers. So this is like the most important uh, topic out of all the peripherals we are going to discuss throughout the module. So timers is like the most important peripheral which will uh, generally be available in any given microcontroller. So what happens is in some of the microcontrollers, there are certain peripherals which comes built in. The microcontroller itself will have some peripherals already available. So one such peripheral which will definitely be available in any given microcontroller is actually a timer. So this timer is uh, something which will be definitely available in any given microcontroller. So a microcontroller can have multiple timers. If not multiple timers, it will at least have one timer available for sure. So if you are understanding the concept of this particular timers uh, here, so the functionality of the timers remains the same in any given microcontroller. So the basic idea of using a timer is just to calculate the time. So functionality wise, terminology wise, or uh, if you understand the basics of timers, you will have the confidence of configuring at least one peripheral given with any microcontroller ahead. Okay, so you have to understand the most important and the very commonly found peripheral in any given microcontroller, which is nothing but timer. Now tell me, why do you think you need a timer? What is the need of timer? Watchdog timer one only, right? RTC is not come under microcontroller. Yes. So watchdog timer is one of a kind of a timer. So that way you will have multiple other timers also. So watchdog timer is an example for uh, a timer. Okay, I was asking, what do you mean by timer? Like why do we literally need a timer? What does the timer do? Okay, when we need some action to be taken after a predetermined amount of time, okay, to continue an event after some time, okay, to manage time, okay, to schedule actions, okay. So yes, so timers are obviously required to make some actions according to a specific time, okay. So whenever I'm, I'm talking about a specific time or a specific interval or you want to take the action on a regular interval you want to count the time so that is when we need the concept of timers so timers are the peripherals which are used to count the running time so what the aim of the timer is just to count the time okay 
So we are going to make use of the timers again for the same purpose that is to count the time. Okay. So as I said, uh, this is like uh, one of the most important peripheral and actually this is one of a source of interrupt also. So timers also raises interrupt. So as the number of the timers are more, then sources of the interrupt will also be more. For example, if there is a microcontroller which is having two timers, then you can count it as two sources of interrupt. So if you see a microcontroller having one timer, then you can count it as one source of interrupt. So timers are also the sources of interrupt. So how do they actually raise an interrupt or what is the reason for raising an interrupt for a particular timer you will understand in today's topic. So timers is one of a source of interrupt also. And the only reason we use timer specially is to calculate the running time. Now once the timer has started, do you think it is going to stop any time? So whenever there is a timer running, do you think it is going to stop any time unless you don't stop forcefully? So once the timers have been turned on, will they stop for anybody? Definitely no. So timers are going to run for infinite number of time. They are going to be active throughout their lifetime once it has been started. So unless and until you forcefully stop it, the timers are not going to stop by themselves. So timers are the ones which are used to calculate the running time. So timers are going to count the time. So they are not going to stop for anybody. They are going to run for their lifetime. Now coming to the timers, we have certain important terminologies which you have to be understanding with respect to the timers. So let us discuss those terminologies first before we go with the applications of timers. Now the very first terminology, okay. How many timers, uh, sorry, I didn't get that word. How many timers, how many sources of timer interrupt in PIC microcontroller, okay. So with respect to the PIC microcontroller, I'll show how many timers you have got. Okay, so we, we are not into the microcontrollers yet. So we are just understanding the basic terminologies of the timers now. So later when I speak about the timers associated to our microcontroller, I'll show how many timers are available later. Now, as I said to start with, we have got some important terminologies to be discussing about when it comes to the timers. So the very first terminology we have started to discuss is nothing but resolution. Okay, so this is the first important terminology. So there are four major important terminologies, something called as resolution, tick, quantum and scaling. So these four important terminologies are very commonly heard when we are speaking about timers. So let us first understand what these terminologies actually represent. To start with, I have taken the very first terminology, which is nothing but resolution. Now, assume there is a timer, okay? And timer is always calculating the time. So assume this is a timer. So this timer is always calculating the time. Now, first initially, if you take any time, what will it start with? So if you take any time, Okay, or any timer, what do you actually start with? It starts with zero. So zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five. So like this, you are going to count the time. So that is your microcontroller is going to count the time. So timer is going to count the time. Now, while the timer is counting the time, don't you think there is a need of a memory to store that time which is being counted? So don't we need a memory for storing that particular time? Obviously, yes. So we always need a memory which is used to count, uh, which is used to store that particular time, which has been counted by the timer. So we are in a need of this memory block. So that memory, we call it as a register. Okay, so we call it as a register in case of our microcontrollers. Assume, there is a register of the name TMR. So I don't know what is the name of the register. I'm just keeping it for the sake of explanation as TMR. 
which represents timer register okay so i don't have a specific reason to keep the name i'm just keeping it randomly as tmr representing timer register now this is the register i have taken which is used to count the time so it is zero initially it starts with zero then after zero it counts one then two then three then four then five then six so that way we have got the time being stored inside the register so there's a doubt then anjay is asking where will that register be present so it should be present in your microcontroller itself so if the timer is built in the register should be available in the microcontroller if you don't take a built in timer then you have to use an external uh, like a register in your microcontroller to store your data but most of the microcontrollers will have a timer built in so to count to store the time whatever the timer is counting so you are going to take the register so i name the register as tmr register of bytes size okay so that is what we are speaking about right now so i take a register called tmr which is used to store the time which is being counted by the timer so i'm going to store the time like this 1 2 3 4 so resolution is in fact if you are asked to say the definition it is just nothing but the width of the timer register okay so width of the timer register or i can say size width or size so they both re represent the same thing so width or size of the timer register is nothing but the resolution so the width of the register which is used to count the time or size of the register which is used to count the time is nothing but resolution so sometimes we call it as the resolution of the timer register is 1 byte okay so the register the resolution of the timer register is 1 byte or it can be 2 bytes or it can be 3 bytes so it can be any number of bytes okay so the size of the timer register is or the width of the timer register is called as the resolution so it will be 1 byte or 2 byte or many more now after this what do you think if it is the timer register if the timer register is of 1 byte how many values do you think you can store here so if the timer register is of 1 byte how many values can you store here okay yes so you always have to think about the unsigned here because time cannot be a negative number have you ever seen time being represented as minus 2 seconds or minus 3 seconds no right so time is always a positive number now if you are given with 1 byte of memory location how much is the range of the value you can store here and specifically it's unsigned so what is the range of values you can store here come on if it is 1 byte yes i can st store any value ranging from 0 to 255 similarly if you take 2 bytes how much is the value you can store 0 to 0 to how much can you store yes so you can store any value ranging from 0 to 65535 okay so it is something like this so resolution is just nothing but the width of the timer register so it can be 1 bytes it can be 2 bytes it can be more also it completely depends on the timer available in the microcontroller if the register is of 1 byte then you can store any value ranging from 0 to 255 then if the register is of 2 bytes you can store any value ranging from 0 to 65535 so this way as the num as the size increases more the value you can store into the register so width of the timer register is just nothing but the resolution so this is nothing but the very first important terminology which is nothing but resolution is this clear okay now proceeding ahead the next important terminology is nothing but tick okay now time the register you have taken which is used to count the time so there is zero initially uh, return 
so after some time it will be changed to 1 then it is 2 then it is 3 then it is 4 then it is 5 so i would write it like this first 0 then 1 2 3 4 5 6 so like this the data is going to get stored inside the timer register now please understand the change in okay the change in the value of the timer register is referred as tick the change in the value of the timer register. See, there is 0 to 1. There is a change. 1 to 2. There is a change. The change in the timer register value is technically referred as tick. The change from 0 to 1 happened after 1 tick. The change from 1 to 2 happened after 1 more tick. The change from 2 to 3 happened after 1 more tick. So the change, whatever change you are seeing, as of now, by default, the difference between the values, the change you are seeing is just one. So the updation in the timer register is happening after every single tick. Okay. The change in the value of the timer register is referred as tick. So 0 to 1 changes after one tick. 1 to 2 changes after one more tick. So two, uh, 2 to 3 change happens after one more tick. So the change in the uh, timer register is nothing but tick. Okay. The same, the change in the timer register is referred as tick. So whatever uh, change you are seeing, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, that is referred as tick. Okay. Now assume... There is a timer register of one byte resolution or I can say eight bit resolution. Okay. So there is a timer which is of eight bits resolution. Now if the timer is of eight bits resolution, can you tell me how many ticks I can achieve? If the timer is of eight bits resolution, how many ticks can I achieve? A maximum of yes. 255 ticks okay so 0 to 1 there is one tick 1 to 2 there is one more tick 2 to 3 there is one more tick so maximum i can reach is 255 okay so maximum i can reach in the timer register if you take the resolution of 8 bits is 255 when the timer is storing 0 0 ticks are covered now, when the timer is storing 1, 1 tick is covered. So, when the timer is storing 2, there is a total of 2 ticks covered. Then, 3 ticks covered when the timer says 3. So, that way, there will be a total of 255 ticks. Okay. There will be a total of 255 ticks by the time timer reaches 255. So change in the timer register is considered as resolute, sorry, is considered as ticks. So if the timer's resolution is 8 bits, then you can see a maximum of 255 ticks. Understood? Uh, tick is like a unit of measurement. It is just something you use to count. Okay. Uh, you can say a unit of resolution, uh, sorry, unit also, but uh, tick, in fact, I would say is just something which is used to me measure the change in the value of the timer register. Okay, so tick is nothing but the change in the timer register. Now I said there is a change. Uh, I am not getting the later. Uh, we can say T2 minus T1. Ticks. Are you asking? Delta T. Okay. Uh, yes, you can say. Okay. All right. Now, I told you there is a change going to happen from 0 to 1. There is a change going to happen from 1 to 2. Then 2 to 3. 3 to 4. Now, tell me, do you know? After how much of time or when exactly there is a change from 0 to 1 made? 
or when exactly there is a change made from 1 to 2 when exactly there is a change from 2 to 3 done do you know that so that we call it as something uh, technically as quantum now what is the quantum is it is the time taken for a tick to happen okay so time taken for a tick to happen or time taken for the change of value in the timer register so that is nothing but but quantum so quantum is nothing but the time taken for a tick to happen now this quantum is going to vary from one microcontroller to another microcontroller so there is no rule that the change from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 have uh, should happen the same way in every microcontroller it is going to vary from one controller to another controller so that you have to go refer the data sheet on what basis is the uh, timer actually changing the value in its timer register so for that you have to do a small study with respect to the microcontroller you can refer the data sheet and find it out so we have actually referred the data sheet of our microcontroller the pic 16a phase 770a and in fact in our microcontroller this quantum is directly proportional to the system clock setting okay so this is uh, directly uh, proportional to the system clock settings okay now no you cannot change the quantum so quantum is uh, always something fixed when the microcontroller has actually been designed so quantum cannot be changed at any point of time so in case of our microcontroller the quantum is directly proportional to the system clock settings okay so in fact at the quantum of our microcontroller the pic 16f 877a is dependent on instruction cycle time okay so how the tick is happening is according to the instruction cycle time so a tick is going to happen after every instruction cycle time so instruction cycle time means the time it takes for the execution of one instruction okay so the time it takes for the execution of one instruction is nothing but instruction cycle time so in case of our pic 16a phase 770a microcontroller so quantum is directly dependent on instruction cycle time so which instruction means it is the instruction what you write in your program okay so that instruction so the time it takes for execution of one instruction cycle is nothing but quantum after every instruction getting executed in your microcontroller there is a tick going to happen so it is not going to vary in one particular microcontroller so if you take a microcontroller it will have fixed amount of time consumed to execute any given instruction okay so if it involves complexity it splits into individual uh, instructions so every instruction is going to take the same amount of time to get executed in any given microcontroller okay so in our case also the quantum is dependent on system clock settings which is just nothing but the instruction cycle time now how do you calculate the time how do you calculate the time on what basis do you calculate the time so you have a formula in your electronics uh, where you calculate the time does anybody refer it yes it depends on the frequency so instruction cycle time is just nothing but 1 over your f oscillating frequency correct so instruction cycle time the time is inversely proportional to frequency all the time so instruction cycle time can be easily found by doing 1 over f oscillating frequency do you remember how much is the oscillating frequency of our microcontroller yes so that is 20 megahertz so that is what we have been uh, setting for our microcontroller in the pixim lab also so the frequency at which our microcontroller works is 20 megahertz so that is i can show here you can see clock in megahertz is 
okay so quantum is 1 over f oscillating frequency in fact so 1 over f oscillating frequency actually gives me the time of a single pulse okay so 1 over f oscillating frequency actually gives me the time of a single pulse but according to our microcontroller every instruction cycle takes four pulses to get executed okay so every instruction cycle is going to take four pulses to get executed so the quantum is 1 over f oscillating frequency multiplied by 4 so instruction cycle of our microcontroller is 1 over f oscillating frequency multiplied by 4 okay so the time taken by every instruction to get executed in our microcontroller is it takes four pulses four clock pulses to get uh, to get executed so one over the oscillating frequency gives you the period of a single pulse but because it takes four pulses to get executed so quantum is nothing but one over the oscillating frequency multiplied by 4 can you tell me how much is this anybody there who can tell me how much is 4 divided by f oscillating frequency which is 20 megahertz zero point two five can you please check yes it is zero point two okay so it is zero point two microseconds in fact It is zero point two microseconds, or can I say uh, it has two hundred nanoseconds? Can I say it has two hundred nanoseconds? Yes. So please understand the change from zero to one, or one to two, or two to three, or three to four. In case of your timer register, is happening after how much amount of time? Yes, it is two hundred nanoseconds. The change from zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four is always happening after two hundred nanoseconds. Even for complex instructions and simple instructions, take the same amount of time. Okay. So, Sayed, generally what happens is ninety nine percent of the instructions are going to get executed in a same instruction cycle. but if you write some complex instruction so a complex instruction will be individually divided into small small instructions it will be splitted and it occupies more instruction cycle okay uh, like uh, literally while it is being worked it might take more instruction cycles so but you are going to split a complex instruction into individual small instructions as well so you can consider the instruction cycle is just nothing but the amount of time it takes to execute any given instruction okay so yes the change from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 is always happening after 200 nanoseconds now think and answer assume i have got a timer register which is of 8 bits resolution okay so there is a timer register of 8 bits resolution now if it is of 8 bits being the resolution tell me how much is the total number of ticks i can cover how much is the total number of ticks i can cover yes it is 255 ticks now tell me if i can cover only 255 ticks can i go beyond it after 255 can i count 256 257 inside that no then if i take a timer of 8 bits resolution which can take which can take only 255 ticks tell me how much time it can cover how much is the maximum time it can cover after 255 ticks so i'm writing total time is equal to 255 ticks multiplied by each tick takes 200 nanoseconds correct 
So how much is the total time being consumed? Or how much is the total time being calculated by the timer? Okay, can I say 51 microseconds? Can I say 51 microseconds? Yes. So if you take a timer of 8 bits being the resolution, you can count 51 microseconds. Okay. Now assume you take a timer. It is of 8 bits. So each tick takes 200 nanoseconds. Will you be okay if it stops after 51 microseconds? Will you be okay? Or do you think the actual timer also does the same job? So if you take any timer, do you think it stops after 51 microseconds? Obviously no. It has to count infinite time. Practically yes. You will not see any timer which is going to stop after 51 microseconds. So it has to count every time, every single second it has to be counting. So practically uh, if you think the timer shouldn't be stopping after 51 microseconds. Then what exactly happens is the question. So please understand once the timer reaches 200 nanoseconds is very difficult for human eyes to see time changing right. Yes. So for the human eyes it is quite challenging. Okay. So we cannot uh, see like 51 microseconds getting cover getting gets covered in fraction of seconds. That is how speed your microcontroller is. That is how fast your microcontroller is. That is why even if you write a for loop which is running for one lakh number of times, it hardly takes two to three seconds for its execution. Okay. Yes. So I was talking that in case of the microcontroller, if the resolution is of eight bits, so after 51.2 microsecond, 51 microseconds, it cannot count afterwards. So that doesn't mean your timer is going to stop stop counting after 51.2 microseconds. In fact, yes, as Muskan is saying, so it is going to roll over. After it reaches 255, it again starts to count from zero. Okay, it again starts to count from zero. Now, actually, it will not by itself start counting to zero. Before that, the moment it rolls over to zero, this is going to rise and interrupt saying, I am full, please count me. So it is going to say after there is an overflow from 255 to zero, there is an interrupt being generated by the timer. Okay. Now tell me after how much of time interrupt gets generated? After or after how much of ticks interrupt gets generated? Come on, after how much of ticks interrupt gets generated? So not exactly 255 ticks. After 255 ticks, after the timer has 255, there is an overflow made from 255 to 0. So that consumes one more tick. Okay, the overflow from 255 to 0 consumes one more tick. So an interrupt is getting generated after 256 ticks. That means after how much of time? After how much of time interrupt is getting generated? If it is 256 ticks, after how much of time the interrupt is getting generated? Yes, it is 51.2 microseconds. Okay, there is an interrupt getting generated after 51.2 microseconds. So what is timer doing? It starts counting the time from 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, it's going, it ticks. It reaches 255. Then there will be an overflow made from 255 to 0. So interrupt is going to get generated. Now when the interrupt gets generated, so it is going to count the tick varying from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, up to 255. 
so after 255 ticks one more ticket consumes to make an overflow from 255 to 0 so after 256 ticks that is 51.2 microseconds and interrupt gets generated okay so i just explained it again shreyas uh, like let me repeat it again so an interrupt is getting gen see it starts counting the time from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 it reaches 255 now if you take a timer register of 8 bits the maximum you can store is 255 so it is not going to stop after it reaches 255 it makes an overflow from 255 to 0 so that overflow is going to take one more uh, instruction cycle that is it consumes one more tick so after there is an overflow from 255 to 0 there is an interrupt getting generated so the interrupt takes 256 ticks for its occurrence that is 51.2 microseconds so again it starts counting from 0 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 so it is going to reach 255 then again an overflow will be made to 0 so overflow is made from 255 to 0 again interrupt gets generated now tell me for every how much time there is an interrupt getting generated for every how much of time there is an interrupt getting generated come on interrupt yes interrupt keeps generating for every 51.2 microseconds do you agree for every 51.2 microseconds first it starts from 0 it reaches 255 overflow happens to 0 one interrupt gets generated so 2 51.2 microseconds gets covered again it starts from 0 it reaches 255 one more overflow happens to 0 so one more time an interrupt gets generated so this way for every 51.2 microseconds there is an interrupt getting generated now see i will write a small program so assume this is your main function okay i'll start here the overflow logic is built in in every timer definitely yes so whatever i'm explaining holds good for any given timer so i am writing a main function so assume i am going to start the timer so i don't know how to uh, like you people don't know how to uh, turn on the timer yet so i am going to write it like this oh. okay one second okay so we will st uh, is our pick resolution fixed to 1 byte always i am not sp speaking about our microcontroller okay i'm generally taking uh, the resolution as 8 bits how much is the resolution how many timers are available we will see with respect to our microcontroller later so as you my have a main function okay as of now we don't know how to turn on the timer i'm just writing it as a statement turn on the timer okay then assume i have some instructions written i1 then this is i2 so some instructions i am writing i3 okay then maybe i4 so assume i have written some instructions okay what will the interrupt do after it gets generated i didn't understand will it tell microcontroller that overflow is happening yes so it is just going to tell the microcontroller that my register is full please consider uh, my particular time so it is going to tell the microcontroller that i have covered 51.2 microseconds now i am going to start from zero all over again so that is what it instructs the microcontroller okay now i have started the timer okay timer has started counting the time it has started from 0 after 200 nanoseconds it counts 1 after another 200 nanoseconds it counts 2 then 3 then 4 so after it reaches 255 so it has covered 51 microseconds 
then an overflow happens from 255 to 0 so it covered 51.2 microsecond now what happens after 51.2 microsecond what happens if after 51.2 microsecond come on an interrupt gets generated so it gets reset to 0 and interrupt gets generated now whenever an interrupt occurs where is the control going in case of our microcontroller if an interrupt occurs where will the control go yes it will go to the isr function now assume i am going to write my isr function okay so something like this so this is my isr function okay which i have written so assume i have some applications return inside it uh, some action to be taken so i am least bothered with what the action it is so in fact actually i am going to check if i came to the isr because of the timer so i am going to write the logic like this if tmr if is equal equal to 1 okay so i don't know what is the name of the flag bit yet so i am keeping it as tmr if itself so if tmr if is equal equal to 1 maybe i want to take some action okay so something like this action i'm going to take okay like this so what happens is assume there was i1 instruction getting executed after 51.2 microsecond the control went to the isr so isr is going to get executed then control comes back to the place where it was interrupted so like this isr gets executed and it comes back to the place where i i1 was executed then again assume i2 instruction is getting executed again after 51.2 microseconds isr is going to get executed control comes back again after 51.2 microseconds like this if the control keeps visiting the isr for every 51.2 microseconds don't you think the main application is going to get delayed don't you think the main application is going to get delayed so obviously yes the main application is going to get delayed if you are going with the i with this kind of isr so practically if you think our microcontroller also if it keeps generating the interrupt for every 51.2 microseconds it is challenging for my microcontroller to focus on the main application if it keeps visiting the isr for every 51.2 microseconds it is challenging so that is why we have to delay this process we cannot let the control go to the isr for every 51.2 microseconds so i have to delay the process of control going to the isr that is done with the help of something called as scaling so the next important terminology is scaling so what does the scaling meaning mean is it is a process of delaying the control going to the isr okay process of delaying the control going to the isr so that your uh, microcontroller gets enough time to concentrate on the main application as well so scaling is the process of delaying the control going to the particular isr now please understand what is happening here so there is a control so you have started counting the time so when the count timer has started counting the time for every 51.2 microseconds control is visiting the isr and because of that the main application is not running it is not getting sufficient time for its execution so i cannot let my control visit the isr for every 51.2 microseconds so i have to avoid it which is done with the help of uh, something called as a scaling now there are two types of scaling it completely depends on the microcontroller you are dealing with so if you think of scaling as i said it's the process of uh, delaying the control going to the isr 
okay is the process of delaying the control going to the isr now this scaling has uh, two types one is pre scaling and the other one is post scaling so which scaling is available uh, completely depends on uh, the particular microcontroller you are dealing with now what does pre scaling mean is as of now uh, if you take one tick how much is one tick actually taking how much is the time each tick is taking generally in case of our microcontroller yes it is 200 nanosecond so one tick is happening after so one tick is happening after every 200 nanoseconds okay that means after how much of time an interrupt is sorry after how many ticks the interrupt is getting generated yes after 256 ticks there is an interrupt getting generated so that is after approximately 51.2 microseconds okay so this is 1 is to 1 ratio uh, or i can say the scale as 1 is to 1 so by default pre scaling will be 1 is to 1 each tick is going to happen after 200 nanoseconds okay so i would write it interchangeably okay so something like this one is to one so after every 200 nanoseconds one tick is happening so after 256 ticks there is an interrupt getting generated so i would say that is after 51.2 microseconds similarly there is a scale of 1 is to 2 okay so there is a scale of 1 is to 2 now if the scale is 1 is to 2 after two instruction cycle okay one instruction uh, cycle so if the scale is 1 is to 2 i will make an tick to happen after two instruction cycle okay so one tick is going to happen after 400 nanoseconds so always interrupt gets generated after 256 ticks only so if one instruction sorry if two instruction cycle takes one tick to happen after how much of time do you think an interrupt gets generated it is 102.4 microseconds okay so if you take the scale as 1 is to 2 after two instruction cycles that is 400 nanoseconds there is one tick happening interrupt gets generated after 256 ticks only that is 102.4 microseconds similarly if you go with the scale of 1 is to 4 if you go with the scale of 1 is to 4 interrupt gets generated after how much of time so four instruction cycle one interrupt is going to get generated okay sorry one tick is going to happen so that is 800 nanoseconds so there will be 204.8 microseconds so like this you can delay the process of control going to the isr you can take 1 is to 8, you can take 1 is to 16, 1 is to 32. You can go beyond this also. It completely depends on what your microcontroller supports. So instead of you, uh, uh, generally it is powers of 2 only, but in some of the cases you can see 1 is to 3 also, 1 is to 6 also. So it completely depends on microcontroller to controller. Okay. So instead of you getting the tick happen after one instruction cycle, you cannot change the instruction cycle time. You can just change the tick period. Okay. You can just change the tick period. So remember, instead of you letting the tick happen after every instruction cycle, with the help of pre-scaling, you can delay that process. You can make one tick to happen after two instructions one tick to happen after four instructions and so on so that is pre-scaling now similarly if you go with post-scaling okay so generally 
after there is an one overflow from 255 to 0 there is an interrupt getting generated okay after there is one overflow there is an interrupt getting generated that is 200 uh, sorry 51.2 microseconds so this is with respect to the scale ratio of 1 is to 1 okay but you can make an interrupt to get generated after two overflows so you are not getting the interrupt generated immediately after the first overflow you will wait for another overflow to happen after two overflows you are going to get an interrupt generated so that is after 102.4 microseconds okay you are going to get an interrupt generated so similarly you can go with 1 is to 4 where you are going to go with four overflows and only after that there is an interrupt getting generated okay so four overflows one interrupt is going to get generated that is after 204.8 microseconds okay so like this you can go with any post scaling ratio also you can go with 1 is to 16 1 is to 32 and many more so you can do the scaling with respect to the instruction uh, cycle or you can do it with respect to the number of overflows also so if it is pre scaling then you are going to do the scaling with respect to the instruction cycle if it is post scaling you are going to do it with respect to the number of overflows so that is nothing but scaling which is uh, nothing but a process of delaying the control going to the iasa so these are the four important terminologies to come across the timers so resolution is nothing but the width of the timer register tick as i said the change in the digital value i forgot to add this point you can either do up ticking or down ticking so up ticking means whatever example i gave here it is up ticking so i will say zero ticks covered one ticks covered two ticks covered three ticks covered that is up ticking or you can say 255 ticks remaining 254 ticks remaining 253 ticks remaining so that is down counting so you can either do up ticking or you can do down ticking so that is completely up to the user's choice quantum is nothing but system clock setting and scaling you have pre scaling and post scaling okay uh, so in post scaling tick is happening after one instruction cycle only yes so if you choose post scaling always the ticking is going to happen after one instruction cycle only okay so that is nothing but the important terminologies and apart from that there are different modes in which you can actually configure the timer so you can uh, configure the timer in three different modes you can use the timer to count the time but apart from that you can also use the timer as a counter you can use to count the time then you can use the timer in pulse width modulation and pulse generation you also can use the timer in pulse width and pulse period measurement so they are like the applications of timers which one is better pre or post there is nothing like which one is better Bo both of them eventually are used to delay the process of control going to the isr so uh, like there's nothing like which one is better both of them performs the same task but the thing is it completely depends on the microcontroller some of the microcontroller offers you only pre scaling some of them offers post scaling in some of the cases you will have pre scaling but less ratio you will have more ratio of post scaling so it depends on the availability of the scaling option in the microcontroller eventually the task of scaling is just to delay the process of control going to the isr so these are the important terminologies of timers any doubt in this
Okay. Okay. So you can take a break of two minutes. We will continue with an example of generating a time. So before that, you can uh, take a break of two minutes. There's a doubt indirectly for the same count 255. We are delaying the process of raising the ISR to improve the main process to happen right. Isn't it be any drawback laying delay delaying the reduced speed like that? No, actually, the only intention of us doing the scaling is to make sure we are providing sufficient time for the main application. So I cannot keep raising an interrupt for every 51 point to microseconds. So in that case, my main application is getting delayed. So just to provide enough time, just to make sure main application is getting its time for the execution, we have to delay the process. You either can do it with the help of pre-scaling or post-scaling. Okay. Delay by using if. No, that is not going to help. So that if block and all is not going to help. That if block is like the delay we are going to provide for the logic. So this delay what we are giving is for the time in fact. Is it possible uh, for both pre and post scaling to be used together? No, that is not possible. So generally you can either use pre scaling or post scaling. You can use both, but uh, it depends as I said with respect to the microcontroller.
and in case of a complex instruction for us we see it as a single instruction but the compiler divides it into multiple simple instructions is required yes so it completely depends on again the microcontroller so whether uh, it consumes the same amount of time for every instruction or it is going to consume more number of instruction cycles to execute one complex instruction so something like that okay fine all right so let us go with an example of for the timers now so let us uh, like calculate a time let us see how to uh, generate a time of the required uh, seconds now to start with assume there is a client who is coming to you and he is asking you to generate a time okay so there is a client coming to you asking for certain uh, time let me in like uh just uh, take it like this mm. okay so as you you are given with some requirement and accordingly you are supposed to operate so to start with there is a requirement provided to you and the requirement says something like this so you have to generate Five pulses of eight microsecond each. Okay, so you have to generate five pulses of eight microseconds each. Now he is giving you some of the requirements also. Assume the resolution he is giving is eight bits. Then the quantum, according to the user, what he is giving is one. microsecond okay the quantum is 1 microsecond now tell me if the resolution is of 8 bits what is the maximum value i can store if the resolution is of 8 bits what is the maximum value yes one second okay So, if the resolution is of eight bits, the maximum value I can store is zero to two hundred and fifty-five. That means, after how much of time? Uh, sorry, after how many ticks the interrupt is getting generated? After how much of ticks the interrupt is getting generated? Yes, two hundred and fifty-six ticks. Now, what does the quantum mean here? what does the quantum mean here so assume there is a microcontroller whose quantum is 1 second so what does quantum mean yes the time taken for each tick to happen is nothing but the quantum which is 1 microsecond So assume there is a microcontroller provided to you whose quantum is one microsecond. That means, can you tell me after how much of time an interrupt is getting generated? Yes, after two hundred and fifty-six microseconds, there is an interrupt getting generated. Do you agree? Okay. So have you ever generated a pulse before this? have you ever generated a pulse before this first of all what do you mean by a pulse what do you mean by a pulse anybody there who knows what a pulse is okay so please understand pulse is just nothing but a square wave okay so with 50% duty cycle okay pulse is nothing but a square wave with 50% duty cycle that means it is just nothing but a square wave with 50% being the on period and 50% being the off period so pulse is nothing but a square wave with 50% being the on period and 50% being the off period if the pulse duration is of 8 microseconds 
okay if the duration of the pulse is 8 microseconds how much should be the on period yes so 4 microseconds should be the on period and 4 microseconds should be the off period so i'm trying to draw that so this what you are seeing on the left hand side of the pulse is the on period because you can see the signal being high and the other half what you see is the off period where the signal is being low okay so i am given with the requirement of uh, generating a pulse with uh, of 8 microsecond okay so 4 microseconds is the on period and 4 microseconds is the off period this is 4 uh, microseconds and this is another 4 microseconds this is on period and this is off period okay now we actually have generated a pulse already before this but you are not aware of it yet like you don't know that this exactly is the uh, pulse for example if i say something like this assume i'll write a small code so assume led is initially 1 okay then i write mm, void mean then inside this i'm going to write while of 1 okay and inside this we write led is equal to mm, not of led and we write a loop if i'm not wrong for uh, int i is equal to 5000 i minus minus have you seen this logic before this have you seen this yes what does it do what does it do it is going to blink the led in fact if you clearly see this actually helps me uh, generate a pulse okay this actually helps me generate a pulse so i'm not able to use the pen here anyways i'll show it here only so if you consider this logic how this actually works is if you take it like this okay okay like this so initially led will be one the moment you enter the while loop led will be toggled so led will be made zero after some amount of time again led will be toggled it will be made one again some amount of time led will be made zero then led will be made one like this don't you think this in fact is a pulse don't you think this is a pulse yes it is a pulse but the problem here is we are not exactly achieving Uh, like exact time so we are maintaining a constant time but we are not sure whether it is 4 microseconds or 5 microseconds or how much is the exact time so we in fact have generated a pulse but not exactly according to our requirement now because we are into the concept of timers our duty is actually in our uh, our duty in fact is uh, something which is used to achieve the proper time okay so we have to exactly achieve 4 microseconds of on period and 4 microseconds of off period that is why we have been uh, learning the concept of timer so now let us do the same thing we want to toggle a particular pin of the microcontroller we want to generate a pulse at the pin of a microcontroller with 4 microseconds of on period and 4 microseconds of off period so i'm going to write a simple program assume initially i take a variable called cp return with the value 1 then i'm going with the void main okay and being inside the main function 
I'm going to take a, a while of one because I have to be uh, writing an infinite loop. But in fact, before I go with time of a while of one, because I'm going to use the concept of timer, I have to turn on the timer. So here also I'll write it as a statement, turn on the timer. Okay. Now being inside while of one, I will not do anything. Okay. As of now, I'm not going to do anything. Now tell me, after I have turned on the timer, after certain amount of time, after there is an overflow made from 255 to 0, there is an interrupt getting generated. So where will the control go when the interrupt gets generated? Yes, so control is going to the ISR. So I'm going here to the ISR. I'll have a simple ISR return. And being inside the ISR, the first thing I have to check is if I came to the ISR because of the timer. So I'm writing the logic if TMRIF is equal equal to 1. So if this is true, I have to toggle my CP. Okay. Uh, so in order to toggle my CP, I'm going to write CP is equal to not of CP. Okay. So CP is equal to not of CP. And after this, I should not forget to make TMRIF back to zero. Okay, so that is what I'm going to perform. Now let us trace this particular logic. So first, timer has been turned on. So I have a register here. It's the timer register. So let me name the timer register as TMR. Okay. So I'm naming the timer register as TMR, whose resolution is of 8 bits. Okay, so the resolution of the timer register is 8 bits. Now timers, I have turned on the timer here. Okay, so timer is going to start counting the time. It starts from 0. Now initially, I have got my CP return with the value 1. So my CP is actually 1. Okay. So CP is actually 1. Like this. So this is my CP initially 1. Now after there is a timer turned on. So it counts starting from 0. So after 0 it has to go to 1. After how much of time it takes from 0 to 1? After how much of time it takes from 0 to 1? Yes, 1 microsecond. Then 1 to 2 after 1 more microsecond. 2 to 3 after 1 more microsecond. 3 to 4 after 1 more microsecond. So after how much of time the interrupt is getting generated? After how much of time? 256 microseconds interrupt is getting generated. Now because the interrupt gets generated, control goes to the ISR. I'm checking if I came to the ISR because of TMRIF. Then it is true. I'm going to toggle the CP. So CP was 1. It has been made 0 right now. Tell me after how much of time did I make the CP 0? After how much of time did I make the CP 0? How much time did it take here? Yes. It took 256 microseconds. Okay, here it took 256 microseconds. Okay, then again, I have started my timer again from 0. It starts from 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Again, after 256 microseconds, control comes to the ISR. CP will be toggled. So CP was 1, it was made 0. Again, after 256, one more time I am toggling the CP. Like this. I have achieved the pulse. Do you agree? Do you agree that I have achieved the pulse? Yes. But how much is the pulse period we have achieved? How much is the pulse period we have achieved? Look at the period of the pulse. How much is the pulse period? Yes. We have achieved 512 microseconds. But we had to achieve only 8 microseconds. This toggling what I have achieved is after every 256 microseconds. 
but i want that to happen in only 4 microseconds now tell me whether the time we have achieved is greater than what we required or lesser than what we require whether the time we have achieved is greater than what we require or lesser than what we require it is obviously greater so i wanted it to be only 4 microseconds but what i have achieved is 256 microseconds can you suggest me what should i be using okay so many of you are asking for scaling now think what will scaling do in fact what will scaling do in fact so earlier in my program i was getting an interrupt generated for every 51.2 microsecond i had to delay i had to extend the time so i used timer sorry i used scaling do you think here i should use scaling do i need more than 256 microseconds no right so should i be using scaling no i shouldn't be using scaling as such then how can you achieve this how to achieve a smaller time when you have already achieved a larger time uh, you cannot change the pulse period and all right guys so that is not possible once it is generated dividing by 64 and all whatever you are saying that is not possible you cannot do something like that okay now i will go with some non technical example in fact then i'll come back to this example assume okay if you think the overflow or interrupt occurs only after there is an overflow from 255 to 0 okay the interrupt has to occur only after there is an overflow from 255 to 0 i'll give you a non technical example assume there is a tap you are provided with okay listen carefully assume there is a tap you are provided with so this tap has a water coming out with some amount of pressure so i am not discussing it in detail okay so uh, okay something like this there is a tap which is giving me water assume there is a bucket also provided to you so this bucket generally takes 10 minutes for it to get filled okay so 10 minutes for it to get filled so you are asked to fill the same bucket in just 5 minutes you are asked to fill the same bucket in just 5 minutes so the things you are provided is you cannot change the pressure of the water you cannot change the bucket you cannot add an extra tap also you cannot change the pressure of the water you cannot add any extra water so uh, uh, like another tap or you cannot change the bucket but you are supposed to fill this bucket in just 5 minutes how do you think it is possible not possible think think no i cannot make any changes to the tap increase the diameter of the pipe no i cannot i cannot make any changes to the tap guys healing how make a hole where i cannot resize the bucket also i cannot resize the bucket as well if i say the answer you will be like is this some is this really an answer 
Uh, that is a very simple answer. Increase the speed of the flow of water. No, I cannot. I just said that you cannot change the pressure of the water. You cannot add an extra tap. You cannot change the bucket. These are the three things. Double the quantum. You are speaking techni technically, but that 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 is not giving me the answer. Need to fill in five minutes. Yes. Okay, can I give the answer? A very simple answer, in fact. Add stones. <laughs> okay, so you are uh, you are like uh, close. Okay, like you don't add stones. In fact, I don't. I don't have to cut the bucket. In fact, my answer was very simple. That you take the bucket already half filled. Don't you think that is going to serve the purpose? I never said you cannot have something already taken in the bucket. My requirement was very simple. Bucket remains the same. Your tap remains the same. Pressure of water remains the same. But you have to get the bucket filled in five minutes. The only possibility is you take the bucket half filled, right? Do you agree? Okay, very similar to that. As of now, if you look at this case, if you look at the scenario or the program we have written, the timer is in is getting the interrupt generated after two hundred and fifty six microseconds. Interrupt always gets generated after there is an overflow from two fifty five to zero. Okay, interrupt always gets generated after there is an overflow from two fifty five to zero. You just have to make sure there is an overflow made from two fifty five to zero in just four ticks. How do you think I can make an overflow from two fifty five to zero in just four ticks? So that is not TP. It's the timer register. So I will load my timer register in uh, with a value so that it gets the interrupt generated in just four ticks. Tell me what can I write in the timer register to get the interrupt generated in just four ticks? Okay, if I write two hundred and fifty one, okay, if I write two hundred and fifty one, one tick two hundred and fifty two. After one more tick two hundred and fifty three, one more tick two hundred and fifty four, one more tick two hundred and fifty five, one more tick it takes to overflow from zero. So interrupt is getting generated actually after five ticks here. So you always have to write the timer with how much? It has to be two hundred and fifty-two. So if I write the timer with two hundred and fifty-two, I will get the interrupt generated in just four ticks. Do you agree? So here, what I will do is the moment I turn on the timer. I'm going to load my timer with 252. So I have taken the name of the timer register as CMR. I'm going to write it with 252. Okay. So actually, there is a formula. The ticks you require. Okay. So the register value has to be something like 256 minus the required value. Okay, two hundred and fifty-six minus the required value. Okay, so what is happening is the uh, required value is nothing but two hundred and fifty-six minus. Sorry, I would say timer register value. Register value is nothing but two hundred and fifty-six minus the 
required value. I want the interrupt to get generated in four ticks. So I have to write 256 minus the required value. Okay. So now what is happening is 256 minus the required value. So I am doing so loaded with 252. Now see what happens. Initially, CP is returned with the value 1. Okay. So I'm taking the value of CP as 1 here. Okay. Now timer has 252. After one tick 253, one more tick 254, one more tick 255, one more tick 255 to 0. So four ticks, each tick is taking one microsecond. So after four ticks, you are in while of one. After four ticks, interrupt gets generated. So control will go to the ISR. Okay. Now when you enter the ISR, you are going to toggle CP. Can you tell me? After how much of time the next interrupt gets generated here? Yes. If you take the next interrupt, the next interrupt actually will be generated after 256 ticks. That is because after there is an overflow, it started from zero again. So 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So next interrupt gets generated after 256 ticks only. You achieved only the first on period of 4 microseconds. The rest of all the periods will be 256 microseconds itself. Okay. So now tell me what should I write? How to make sure my next interrupt is also getting generated after 256 ticks only? How to make sure the next interrupt is getting generated after 256 ticks? Yes. I have I I that is not inside while of one. If you write it inside while of one, every time you are writing TMR with 252 only. Yes, that has to be inside your ISR. So somewhere here, the moment you come into the ISR and you check that you came to the ISR because of the timer, you have to write TMR with 252 again. Okay, so once there is an overflow made from 255 to 0, interrupt gets generated. Again, timer will be returned with 252 only. So 252, then 253, then 254, then 255, then 0 interrupt gets generated so for every 255 uh, overflow from 255 to 0 interrupt is getting generated but i'm making sure you are reaching 255 to 0 in just four ticks that is why i'm writing the timer with 252 every time now i will end up getting the interrupt generated for every four ticks here so after four ticks, one more time you, uh, you come to uh, the ISR. So you toggle the CP. Again, one more time after four microseconds, you come to the ISR, you toggle the CP. So that way you are going to take uh, four microseconds to get the interrupt generated. So if you want to extend the time okay, of you reaching the ISR, then you have to use the scaling. If you have to reduce the time of you reaching the ISR, you have to preload the timer register with some value. So here we are loading it with 252 because I want the interrupt to get generated for every 4 microseconds. Is that clear? So you can see the same example here. Requirement is 5 pulses of 8 microseconds. Resolution is of 8 bits and quantum is 1 microsecond. So you can see timer register is always loaded with 252. So after 4 ticks, there is an interrupt getting generated. Because you see a overflow from 255 to 0, an interrupt gets generated. So like this, every time timer is loaded with 252, Hence, the interrupt gets generated for every 4 microseconds.
Is that clear? The number of overflows is also being recorded. That is because our requirement was to just generate five pulses. So here I'm not uh, like exactly generating five pulses. I'm sorry. So in fact, I'm trying to actually generate a clock pulse of eight microsecond. I'm not doing it for five pulses only. So to make sure there is only five pulses, it is counting the number of overflows. We are taking time of pulse as equal equal to time for one interrupt, right? Yes. Because we are toggling the CP in ISR. So that is why we are taking a time of uh, of each pulse is nothing but the time it takes for the interrupt to get generated. Okay, is that clear? Practically, can't we say one quantum as one pulse time? So in this case, no, one quantum is not one pulse time. That is not right. Quantum is one microseconds only. So one pulse is taking four microseconds. Sorry, one pulse is in fact taking eight microseconds. So quantum is not same as one pulse. Four quantum is one pulse. No, eight quantum is one pulse. So pulse means on period and off period together. And in this example, you can say uh, eight pulses as one, uh, sorry, uh, four, sorry, eight quantum as one pulse. Now that is always difficult to remember that way. What is the difference between the pulse and the instruction? So pulse is nothing but the amount of time it consumes. Instruction is the instruction. This is one instruction. TMR equal to 252 is one instruction. So while of one is one instruction. Then TMR IF equal equal to one is one instruction. That is instruction. Pulse means the waveform you're going to get generated. Quantum is decided by the manufacturer, right? It varies from microcontroller to microcontroller. Yes. So here in this case, time for instruction is equals to pulse time. No. So this is the pulse we are generating. We are supposed to generate the pulse of the required time. Okay. So one pulse I am generating for seconds. So that it was, was the requirement. Okay. So please don't get confused with what is the pulse, what is the quantum. Quantum is the time taken for one instruction to get executed. Normally four quantum used for one instruction. No. Why are you so confused? Yes, one instruction cycle takes four pulses of your microcontroller. Okay, wait. So please don't confuse yourself. So to get one instruction executed, your microcontroller, the PIC microcontroller takes four instruction, four pulses to get one instruction executed. So one, two, three, and four pulse like this. So it takes four pulses to get one instruction executed in case of your microcontroller. Okay. So here in case of the requirement provided, quantum is one microsecond means your microcontroller takes one microsecond for um, let's say one instruction to get executed. I cannot literally say not every microcontroller will depend on one instruction cycle only. It varies from one controller to another controller. In this controller, quantum says one microsecond. You just have to understand that one tick is going to happen after one microsecond. That is it. 
so in case of our microcontroller one instruction cycle took four pulses so don't correlate it with every microcontroller so quantum just represents the amount of time it takes to get one instruction sorry one tick happens one quantum is equal to time of one instruction so i am repeating again so that is not going to remain the same in every microcontroller okay so in case of our microcontroller one quantum is equal to the time taken for one instruction that is right but in this controller what the requirement is provided it might not remain the same so what they say quantum is one microsecond means it takes one microsecond for one tick to happen is that clear now okay so whenever you want the interrupt to get generated uh, uh, like slower then you have to make use of scaling whenever you want the interrupt to get generated faster than what is already achieved then you have to preload the timer register with some value so i am going to preload the timer register with the value 252 in my case because i wanted the interrupt to get generated in just four ticks so because i want four microsecond each tick is taking one microsecond so i want the interrupt to get generated in just four microseconds so i loaded my timer register with 252 so this is how you are going to calculate a smaller time by preloading the timer register with some predefined value any doubt in this okay so the next we have got is to generate a larger time and in fact we have to start with the programming of the timer also i think we will do it in the next class timer smaller okay so that we are going to do it in the next class i hope today's class is all been clear please have your attendance mark before quitting okay here is your qr is having attendance marked and quit the session thank you all if in some case we need to calculate the total time passed there we have to keep track of the number of overflows right yes to calculate the total time okay to know how much total time is being uh, calculated then you have to uh, go with um, the number of overflows also that also counts kalyani you are not there in the group uh, like did you ping the uh, the student counselor or any student admin department